let's look at now reactions of alkenes and alkynes. Now, uh, when dealing with these kinds of reactions, um, there's a lot more um, reactivity that, that can actually occur amongst alkenes and alkynes. And, and the reason for that is because of the presence of um, double bonds, right? So double bonds and triple bonds, right? So the presence of these types of bonds uh, are what allow for greater chemical reactivity um, within these types of hydrocarbons. Right? So typically, these kinds of reactions um, will take place um, a little bit easier. Right? If we look, if you look back at the, the video about reactions of alkanes, and you looked at the substitution reactions, right? They were more likely to occur um, in the presence of heat or UV light. However, with some of these alkene alkyne reactions, typically just room temperature. Um, is good enough to allow for these uh, to actually take place. Okay, so let's look at um, the um, the following, uh, and so we're looking to look at what, one other type of reaction, which is called an halogenation, uh, which is really it's an addition type of reaction. If we're using bromine, if we're using chlorine, remember what we said about fluorine. Fluorine being very very reactive. Now, what's going to happen is we're referring to this being a an addition reaction. So really what's happening? Now, we talked about the reaction being reactive because of this double bond. And in fact, that's really where the location of the addition is actually going to take place. So what's going to happen right, at uh, room temperature, right, so at room temperature, What's going to happen is this double bond is going to pretty much almost kind of be removed, we can say, right? So what it's going to kind of form is really bonds that can allow, uh, right? So remember we said, you know, if they've got an electron there, they can share that electron. So that electron now no longer will get shared because we've, we're now in the presence of the this um this halogen, right? This bromine gas. So what's going to happen is one of these bromines, right? One of these bromines is going to bond here, and the other bromine is going to bond here. So the end result is going to look as such. Right, we're going to have the two carbons that used to display a double bond. Right, they used to be unsaturated, but now they've become saturated. And now we are including or we are adding the bromine molecules. Right? So all of a sudden, we went from having or starting with uh, an ethene molecule, and now we are ending with a one comma two dash di bromo ethane molecule. Now look at this molecule, and let's look back at the oh the uh, the previous um, example when we were talking about the reaction with alkanes, right? Look at this right here same compound, same structure was formed when we were introducing ethane, right? We were introducing ethane in this example, right? With um, the bromine gas, and, and eventually it formed this 1,2-dibromoethane. And if you look at now with the new example, we were able to form the exact same structure. However, we didn't need Right? If you look back at that example, we needed heat, we needed UV light. However, we could still get that same end result, but we were using an actual alkene. Looking at a different type of um, reaction with alkenes and alkynes 
is what we call a hydrogenation reaction. In this hydrogenation, we are introducing hydrogen gas um, to this structure. And as we said before, right, this is an addition reaction, so really we're going to be adding here two moles of hydrogen gas to this. And what happens is, look at this right here. There's the triple bond. That is typically where this reaction is going to take place. So what's going to happen is one of these triple bonds is no longer going to be there. And it, what it, it will do is it will make room for one pair of those hydrogens, right? We've got a total of four hydrogens here. Right, so two times two, four, right? So one of the double bonds will no longer exist to accommodate for the addition of these hydrogen uh, atoms. Then what's gonna happen is the same thing is gonna happen with one of the other remaining bonds and it will allow for the bonding of the other remaining hydrogens. Right? So originally, right, originally we started, right, if you rewind the video, we started with an ethyne molecule and we ended with an ethane molecule. Right? So let's, uh, let's take this back now. Right? So let's take this back a little bit right? and let me just show you what we originally had. Right? So this is what we originally had, right? So here is our ethyne molecule. And as we said, these hydrogens are going to pretty much attack at the triple bond to allow us to form right, our ethane molecule. And I'll put the the hydrogens in a different color just to show you and it doesn't really matter whether you put the hydrogens there or, or with these ones it doesn't really matter just you know that we are pretty much attacking this uh, i like to call it attacking that uh triple bond to allow that reaction to actually take place next type of uh alkene alkyne reaction i i do want to look at is what we call the hydrohalogenation and it's also an addition reaction because we're going to be adding, right, atoms to this uh, hydrocarbon, right? However, the, the atoms that we're adding are going to be some type of um, hydrogen halide, right? Hydrogen halide. So hydrogen bonded with one of the halogens. And here in this example, we have HBr gas, right? Hydrogen bromide gas. This reaction will take place um, at room temperature. This reaction will take place uh, at room temperature. And what's going to happen is, again, as we've said before, pretty much the location in which the reaction is going to take place is going to be at the site of this double bond. So now what's going to happen is, which one of these, you know, are going to bond? Right, so we're looking at this double bond, and this double bond is going to make room. Right? It's going to make room, so we're going to get rid of this double bond. And what's going to happen is it's going to have. And we're going to put it in a different color. That spare electron that is ready that that used to be shared now ready to form bonds. However, we have pretty much a hydrogen and a bromine that will either bond to one of these, right? So now, which one? We can put a hydrogen, we can put the hydrogen here and the bromine here, or we could put the bromine here and the hydrogen here. However, both results, right? This first result and this second result will give rise to a completely different um, nomenclature name right different different name for the structure so which one will actually um will it actually be now i'm going to introduce now this um this certain rule right and the the rule is 
uh, referred to as the Markovnikov rule. Let me uh, write that down. Markovnikov rule. Right. So it's pretty much an experiment that, that showed um, that there was really only one type of main product that can actually occur when this reaction took place, even though we say that there's a possibility of two different reactions happening. But only one type will happen. Which one of these is really going to happen? And according to, and it's a rule based on uh, a rule that, that's known as the, 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 the Markovin, Markovnikov rule, named after uh, a Russian chemist, obviously. And really what it, it says is that carbons will try to become hydrogen rich. Right? So which one of these carbons is going to continue to be hydrogen rich? So when we look at this carbon here, right, this first carbon, right, and uh, let, me, uh, let me circle it, that first carbon. This first carbon here has two hydrogens already. Right? This second carbon, where the bond can actually occur, has only one hydrogen associated. So according to Markovnikov the Markov, or Markovnikov's rule, which carbon is going to continue to be rich? So it's kind of like the rich getting richer. So this carbon here is already rich with hydrogens. So it's going to want to continue to be rich. So which example? It's definitely not going to be the bromine that bonds to it, it's obviously going to have to be the hydrogen because it's already got two hydrogens as opposed to the one hydrogen this carbon has. So the hydrogen is going to remain with the richer carbon. So what's going to happen here is the following. So this bond, obviously, this bromine isn't going to bond there. We know it's going to be hydrogen. Right? So let's erase part of this. Right? So the bond that's going to actually occur here is with hydrogen, which means that over on this side here, the only option we have really to bond will be with the bromine. And so in the end, the end result, right, if you rewind the video, we started off with a propene molecule and we ended here with what we call a 2 bromo propane molecule and this is also an addition reaction last one we're going to look at is hydration right so over here what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding water to this um, to this reaction, and as we've said before, time and time again in uh, in the previous videos, when dealing with reactions with alkenes and alkynes, and um, is that reactions are going to, like I say, attack where the double or triple bond is actually going to, to occur. Right. So what happens here? Well, very similar to uh, to the other one. So we're, I ended up writing water as such, as a hydrogen hydroxide here. So what's going to happen is hydrogen is going to bond to one of these carbons, right? So this double bond here, and actually before uh, we actually go, right, the original name of, um, of this compound here is, well, we've got a propene molecule, right? And let's find out what this propene molecule will occur when we introduce water. And this will occur when we have the presence of some kind of a catalyst, right? Um, probably the presence of um, sulfuric acid. Um, and so what's going to happen is the following, right? So this double bond is going to break apart and it will make it rise to the possibility of new bonding sites between the carbons. So which one of these? Hydrogen is going to bond to one of these carbons. Which carbon? Right. So if you go back at, to where I uh, in, in the previous um, example, we refer to the Markovnikov 
right? Markovnikov's rule. And the rule, as was stated, was that which one of these two carbons is hydrogen rich, meaning it's got more hydrogens. And whichever carbon is more hydrogen rich, it's going to continue to try to get rich by grabbing on to more hydrogens. And which carbon will that be? Well, the first carbon is going to take this H, and a bond is going to occur here, which means this OH, this alcohol group, will form right there. And so the name of this compound now, so this propene molecule has now become a 2-hydroxy, or sorry, hydro, well, hydroxy propane. So notice we started off with a double bond and with just all uh, saturated uh, carbons. And again, which carbon is going to grab the hydrogen if the hydrogen is present? Well, we're going to use what we call Markovnikov's rule.